Hey guys, we're in the Dark Horse Mustang now, and we're here with Victor from Ford. Hey Victor, how's it going? And you work at Ford, and you've worked on this Mustang, so we're gonna go take on a little bit of a drive right now in Manhattan. Maybe not the best place for a Mustang, but it sure does sound insane. And now Victor is just telling us that we have four different exhausts on the Mustang. What's your favorite feature of this thing? Uh, besides the exhaust? Besides the exhaust. <laughs> and this Andy? sweet um, gear shifter right here. So this gear shifter is actually a funny story. This is titanium, right? Yeah. You know, we looked at different options between going with, you know, the carryover plastic tape shifter or um, even aluminum, yeah. steel, but at the end of the day, a titanium, anodized titanium one, and it's... I mean, That's, I mean, just look at it. It's epic. It's, it's pretty. It's a jewel, right? It's beautiful. I think so, it's a good piece for the car, and it fits the color on the exterior, absolutely. too. <laughs> it definitely does. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. And uh, with the Dark Horse specifically, I mean, with the blue stitching and everything else mm -hmm. we have going on, like, the, like, blue is a big theme for the Dark Horse yeah. um, itself, and it really ties in together well. Sweet. And then, what is that? <laughs> So, so this is, is your parking brake. Your parking brake, right? But it's also your drift brake. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing I think people are going to really want to know. A little so, bit of a drift brake. When you go into your into your uh, your track apps, right? Uh -huh. You can select drift brake from your menu, and it'll put you in track mode. And then you can actually use the drift brake to initialize a drift. <laughs> now, you still have to know how to drift and how to do of the course. driving. It's not going to turn you into a hero but it will help you um, get there a lot better. Awesome. Now, does this have a limited slip diff in the back? Yes. Awesome. It sure does. Sweet, and I can see the line lock button, so. Yeah. <laughs> not, not for Manhattan, <laughs> that's, that's for another time. Not for today. Absolutely to not. My job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yes, it does have. And I think it keeps that really traditional Mustang exhaust rumble in the cabin. That's why you get one of these cars. Oh, wow. That's sweet. <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Now, in the engine, obviously, it has around like 500 ish horsepower now. Correct. And what did they do with the, the intake? Is there some? I heard some bits from the older, um, the Shelby engines a little bit. So, or some learnings. <laughs> uh, so, when you can, we can say learnings for sure. Yeah. But I mean, this is the fourth gen Coyote. Of course. Right? So it's technically new for yeah. um, the seventh gen Mustang. But within the engine, I mean, it's still a five liter V8 mm -hmm. that is derived from the previous gen uh, five liter that we had. But now, instead of a single throttle body, right, we have dual throttle bodies, so okay. two intakes. Um, and we can show you that next time we stop. Yeah. Right, so you have two air boxes with two filters, and those are going to two different throttle bodies. Mm -hmm. um, so a new intake manifold that's all new for the program, right? Obviously, to fit those, yeah. uh, those throttle bodies up. And um, for the dark horse specifically, to make the 500 horsepower, I think it's that number, right? It wasn't. It didn't just happen, right? We, it's like you figure we have the same displacement as an outgoing five liter. Yeah. That essentially was maxed out at 480, right? Well, to get to 500, a little bit of tuning work, um, a little bit more fuel, a little bit more air, obviously helps. But then also we had to add the connecting rods from the GT500. Okay. Right? So the previous shell we, shell we GT500. Right. We took the connecting rods out of that motor, put them in here, <laughs> and that allowed us to get our 500 horsepower. That's on. sweet. Yeah. So it's got a little bit of Shelby. A little bit of influence there. <laughs> and this has, does this come with like an adaptive um, suspension system? Yeah, Magna Ride. Magna Ride? So Magna okay. Ride is standard on all of our dark horses. Okay. Yep. And so when you go to change your suspension, right, you can you can select between normal sport and drag, but it also depends on your on your drive mode. So if you're in normal, you get normal sport, you get sport. And then oh, that's sweet. Track, right? So. And that just, the display looks super quick too. The display shows you kind of you know what it is that you're yeah. changing or you're looking at when you select each one. Same thing for your steering, traction control. Oh, there's a lot of adjustment going on uh, this now. For your exhaust, <laughs> right? And then your gauges. That's awesome. I, I, people always hate on these big displays, but this is this is really well integrated. I think now yeah. seeing it in person, and it's super quick. It's yeah. it's a Sync Four system. Uh, this is Sync. This is Sync Four. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Displays can be <laughs> hit or miss. There's a lot of love and hate against them. Yeah. Um, the way we did it here, I think, was is, is, was right. You know, we added a lot of a lot of useful content yeah. to your screen space so that it's there's not a lot of dead space here that's just you know round, right? Of so, course, yeah. I think it works. I think it looks really cool. And these seats are obviously they're really nice. These are, are these. Oh, the car ones are exclusive to the dark horse on so the handling get, package, right? You can get Recaro's in your GT and your Eco 
okay. as well, your performance packages. But the Dark Horse has the option of getting the the, the Reparos with the suede insert, the micro suede insert. Okay. Right, that help you know add a little bit more stability in those corners, kind of hold you in, doesn't let you slide around as much. So. <laughs> 